What's up guys? We get a lot of questions in the comments asking like, how do you clean your gemstones? How do you clean mineral specimens? <laughs> and we're about to show you that right now. Wow. <gasps> okay. okay. We got some crystals. They're dirty. Oh, that one's really dirty. Yeah. Look at that. So the caveat when it comes to cleaning gemstones or pretty much any mineral specimen, the thing that we like to hound in people's heads is warm, soapy water. And I think warm. we've got a bowl of that. I think that right is, here. yeah, that's why we have. So in here, we got some warm water and we've got some, I believe it's uh, dish soap. Dish soap, so, okay. So, you know, it, if it's good enough for the ducks, it's good enough for your rocks. So this is cactus amethyst. You can see where it gets the name. It's very spiky. Yeah. As you can see in here in this cactus amethyst, um, it's got a lot of like crevices and this mm -hmm. dirt has worked its way right into there. Ideally, when you find something like this, it's going to be like encased in a clump of clay or silt. Yeah. It's going to be way dirtier than this. Sarah here, you've just got some nice crystals. So these, these are quartz crystals as well, and we can yeah. tell because they're six-sided. And another indicator on quartz crystals is you have striations going across the uh, pinacoid, but we're gonna put them in the soapy water here, clean them up a little bit, and we'll get a nice luster on it. After. Yeah. We've got a little tiny brush here just to help. Oh, that's bit. cute. So you go ahead and give it a dunk there. Yeah, swirl it around. Oh, I see This water's the dirt. gonna be really dirty by the yeah. end of this. See, the and dirt's starting to come off, actually, but the crevices, you do still get that. You have to rub, get your thumbs on it and stuff. All right, we're getting this, some dirt yeah, off. There's we're getting some, some areas. dirt off, but then like this one, the crevice is just so... So deep, let so, me yeah, see. Yeah, and so, so narrow that you can kind of need the so I'm, something. I'm get under it. I'm just gonna start brushing it like teeth. Most companies that sell crystals, like high value crystals and stuff like that, they have a specific cleaning process in which they use really strong chemicals. Okay. Like really, like you don't want to dive into that as a hobby. And these, you know, these chemicals will dissolve the dirt. They'll dissolve pretty much everything but the crystal. I imagine that they can't use that on just any no, crystal. No, it, it is a science and it's probably yeah. specific for each gemstone because yeah. You know, different materials react with different elements. And as you know, gemstones are all made of different elements. Right. This is what colors them, what creates their structure. But this is getting pretty clean. I don't know if we're going to get these tips. Probably iron staining right here. This is yeah. iron staining. It looks kind of like it's, the crystal's rusting. Yes. So sometimes iron staining can get just get in there. It's not really dirt. So if you see right here, you know, we still got some roughage right here, which if you feel that right there, it's really rough. It's not yes. smooth like this. So we're able to get a lot of the dirt off on these smooth surfaces, like that crevice there that mm -hmm. had all of that dirt in it. But what I'm really excited to get to is I want to dunk this heck just down with this. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's so, it's very satisfying when something's dirty. It is. And then you just, before and after the, ah. Oh. So this is coming off really easy. That's because all of the pinacoids to these crystals, these really tiny crystal terminations out of the side of this, they're all have a very vitreous luster. They're all very smooth. Mm -hmm. So there's not really any crevices that can harbor the dirt. If you look at that. Like I've spent a fraction of the time cleaning yeah. this and it is so satisfying. That's pretty much it. Yeah. <laughs> that was really easy. Always remember warm, soapy water. If you have a question about it, warm, soapy water. Gemstones have a property referred mm -hmm. to as stability, which is a gemstone's susceptibility to be attacked by heat, light, or chemicals. Some gemstones have very low stability. Really gemstones like peridot. Yeah. You don't want to expose harsh cleaning chemicals to the surface of peridot because it can dull its luster, it can attack. Yeah, that gemstone. Yeah, I wish I knew that sooner because that's my birthstone. And um, oh, no. yeah, they're just not quite as uh, shiny. Okay, so that's the mineral specimens. Yeah. But there's lots of other stuff we can clean. So let's get this bowl of water out of the way and over to the side. We can keep these awesome crystals on the camera here. And let's bring in the next box. All right. All Ooh. right. 
We got some loose gemstones. Loose. Looks like quartz. Let's take a dive. Right here, like we got some smoky quartz. It's huge. It's like that's like 30 carats or something. Here we've got another quartz. This looks like tourmalinated though. So we got some tourmaline inclusions. Okay. So the surface of them are very grimy. You get fingerprints on it, you yeah. know, you get dust on it. If, if you've got your gemstone collection just sitting on a shelf for a while, they'll get dusty. So we've got some products here we're gonna show you that you can actually buy. We'll put the links down in the description below yeah. to kind of shimmer up your gemstone. So let's bring those out. All right, so I got some products here. I'm gonna give you this. Ooh, okay. And I've got this. These are essentially the same thing. This is called a sparkle stick. And these have a kind of soap inside mm -hmm. of them that are generally safe for any gemstone that you have in your collection. I would limit it to loose gemstones and jewelry though. I wouldn't right. put this on like your mineral specimens. Warms open water for that. Yeah. Yeah, this is this definitely has the soap. You can definitely feel that it. it's not like a little little yeah. tissue that they just like spritzed with water or something. Mm -hmm. It like actually does have something in there. Another cool thing about these wow. products, yeah, look at that. So different. Is the the product has a shellatting agent inside of it. So it's kind of like waxing your yeah. car. So once you clean off the gem, it's gonna leave this residue behind that's going to just make your gem sparkle like crazy. Look at that, I can already see the difference. Yeah, it's like night sure. and day. I don't want to like get my fingerprints <laughs> on it now. The luster on that is just completely different. And it was so fast too. Yeah, like it it's not, you know, something you have to really work at. It's just a just a nice little whoop. Whoop. So I'm gonna clean this smoky quartz now with this stick. All right, and we're just gonna paint over the top here. I, I just wanna paint over the table because I kind of want to see a contrast and see what it does exactly. The, the only difference with um, this is this puts a little more um, yeah. of the agent on. Yeah, it's definitely it, more. It's, it's going to take a little longer to dry. See, right now we're working on like really large surfaces, but the applicator here, it's like a paintbrush. So it would be mm -hmm. really good with jewelry and getting in like yeah. crevices and, and tight nooks and stuff like that. You can also use warm soap and water to clean your gemstones. It might be a little more difficult. You know, when it comes to things like this, these are really big examples. But yeah. normally your gemstones are going to be like one or two carats. They're going to be hard to get in your fingers and clean at the same time. So if you yeah. have something smaller, the wipe might be perfect for you. Yeah. Because you can clean about, you could probably just, it's one session. So if you have small gemstones, you can probably just clean all of them that you have with one wipe. Yeah. I don't know what kind of dirt hole you live in though. So we were talking earlier about stability. This product is great for any gemstone because it's got natural ingredients. It doesn't have tough detergents, really strong chemicals in it. It's very chemical, chemically light. So I'd highly recommend yeah. this product. All right, next box. Let's do it. Oh. We got jewelry. So this has a metallic coating on top of it. It's either mystic topaz or mystic quartz. Mm -hmm. It's a small titanium coating that causes iridescence. Cleaning is very important for this because that titanium coating can chip off. Oh, really? So if, okay. If you're using anything abrasive at all, it will like, it'll come off and you'll see cuts in the iridescence. Oh, okay. You don't want that. You don't want that. Some of these are silver and they've got heavy tarnish on them. If you have silver, silver is going to tarnish over time. Right. It's just what happens. And it's a chemical reaction with the air that causes the luster of the metal to dull. And you need a special cloth to clean it. I don't want to rub all this dirt in it though. So what we're going to do first is we're going to run these through an ultrasonic cleaner. So an ultrasonic cleaner is mm -hmm. a device that shoots high frequency sound waves yeah. into the tub here. We have a solution of supersonic soap, is mm -hmm. what the box said, and water. It's one part soap, 10 parts water. So okay, it's yeah. extremely diluted. Yeah. One thing I would like to state before we get started is you want to do a little research before you put your gemstone in an ultrasonic cleaner, because if you have a soft gemstone, gemstones like opal, turquoise, a kind of feldspar, these are stones that 
typically can't withstand mm -hmm. the uh, the sonic booms of the cleaner. But it's it's been known to cause like cleavages, fractures, breaks in the stone just from the sound waves. So you want to be a little careful. They normally keep the rings in there for a few minutes, so we'll try that. Yeah, let's just give it a try. All right, so we've dipped the rings in individually. We dipped the pendant in too. What we noticed when we were putting the jewelry in the ultrasonic cleaner is, of course, all the big chunks of dirt would just fly right off. But other than that, we would see like these mist, like these clouds. Of, yeah. Like dirt and dust. Like and oils stuff or something. Coming out yeah. of like the little tight spaces in the rings. It's really cool. But we're going to take these out now. We're going to see how they look after. And I already see a lot of shine. Yeah. It does a wonderful job but I did not enjoy that. Normally, when you run these things, you run them in a room and, and then, then you, you walk, walk away. Yeah. yeah. Five minutes seemed to be like what yeah. we needed to do. It depends yeah. on like how dirty it is. All right, so here are our cleaned up rings. It's definitely cleaner, for sure. It did a very good job. There's still a little, a little rubbiness dirt. in there. And if we had left it in, for longer exactly and, and would have done it this is something that i think the stick the stick yes the stick be. and the wipes so yeah the wipe. yeah that gets in there and it's getting all sudsy in there yeah so let's let that sit it takes a little longer for the, the sparkle stick so like i said earlier tarnishing happens to silver sterling silver when it's been left out exposed to air too yeah. long so if you take a look at this pendant, I've been saving this one. It almost looks like it has a black coat on it. We are going to make this black coat yeah. disappear. And we're gonna do it really easily. And it's very, it's like one of my favorite things to do for some reason. All right, so whenever you see these polishing cloths for silver or jewelry, it always looks like this. It's protecting um, this white cloth. So how do you know it's working? Well, it's really easy. So we're gonna take this corner right here, we're just gonna rub it back and forth on this white pad. And we will see the cloth starting to turn black. So I'm gonna rub, just rub my fingers over it with the cloth. You can already see it's wow. starting to shine up a lot, mm -hmm. just instantly. That tarnish comes off really easily if you have a polishing cloth. Yeah where the cloth could get very shiny. Very. Very shiny, but deep down in there, there's some pieces of wire. What I really want to do is I want to hit one of these rings. Yeah. And I want to polish only half of it. All right, so I've only polished half of this. Whoa. This, yeah. yeah. It this didn't look polished. like it was no, super tarnished before. It's like you almost get used to it. It's a slow process tarnishing, so you don't really notice it. Yeah. But when you polish it, you're like, oh my gosh, my ring used to look amazing. Yeah. So it's a super simple process. Like I said, we have these uh, the links in the description below for these cleaning products. They're amazing products. Do a little bit of research, of course, if you have high value gemstones, high value yeah. minerals before you start cleaning on it. One thing I forgot to mention a little earlier is you never want to use compressed air on your gemstones. This is because it can cause thermal shock. It'll add too much cold to the gemstone yeah. and that can cause a fracture or a break. Yeah. But other than that, these, these uh, products are amazing products. Check out the links in the description below if you'd like to get your hands on some. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring that bell so you don't miss out on any future videos. And thanks for watching. Bye. Thank you.